All right, let's start the critiques. Okay. So this one's this one's barbarians. That face is crazy. I don't know about that. There's a crazy face. This is an interesting remix of the song. So, uh, in general, the materials look pretty good. Uh, I actually really like the platform. Uh, when it comes to the, let's see here, I'm gonna click this so we get the nice full, full size action going on here. When it comes to these details, it feels like uh, they're not, uh, Feels like they're not being projected correctly. He does look kind of sad. I don't know what's going on. Uh, the the way that these are drawn in, it feels rough. I don't know if this is all intentional though. Where's my mat? Oh man, I didn't make one. Is that that competition's already over, isn't it? What was that? I lost it. Hang on here. Nutcos, thanks for the follow, man. In general, though, this looks pretty cool. Like the, you know what I'm talking about? Like these feel really flat. There's got to be ways around that. So that's not so flat. Like, so this looks more curved. I mean, don't they have screen, splay, uh, screen space uh, displacement? Ins the 13th. Oh, man, there's no time for me. I've got too much stuff going on. Life and life and dog. Life and dog and, and lady. Uh, in general, though, I like the the face itself or this face area. I will straight. <laughs> I'm gonna say it, barbarian. It's lazy. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. Like, uh, like if you could find a way to build patterns and and carve stuff within the brush. I know maybe you were just messing around though. Like it feels like you couldn't figure out what you wanted to do with this area. Like this is this is cool, but like uh, maybe adding some circles here on the bottom for the for the mouth. That's like the harshest I've ever been to anyone's work. In in my brain, I'm apologizing. Just so you know, you're just messing around. Oh man, why am I even critiquing this? <laughs> The platform is actually pretty good. I like how how it's chipped, like the mask for it. I almost feel like uh, if there was a piece here, like that was lifted and was a different material, that'd be pretty cool. And a difference between like things that are too chipped up and things that aren't chipped up could be a nice contrast. This, that stare though, man, he is not, I mean, that that's not a messing around look, is what I'm getting at, Barbarian. <laughs> oh Jesus, what's happening? There we go. Your me seeks was pretty rad. All right, so this one is from James, or James. Hang on here. Oh, why did it open here? I'm like, I lost the spot in the thing. So this one's from James or Jam79. You were wondering if you should take another pass to the normal map, perhaps do a high to low bake. Also, what areas of, uh, of the other material should I give some love in order to add character and story to this prop? <laughs> Bob, thanks for the, <laughs> thanks for the crit, man. <laughs> Oops. Um, let's see here. So this, uh, this, this edge here feels really narrow. So it's hard to read what is happening with the, uh, the normal. 
the vent on the side as well is flat and you should totally just make it just model it out who cares if it's expensive or like uh, model it inward and then alpha like a fake space inside something like that you know that way it doesn't uh, come off as flat uh, from the front it looks pretty good the keys look a little muted I'm not sure if it's like uh, hmm I mean I'm sure they're they're muted like that in real life I guess I would need some reference to understand the oh yeah totally like okay so taking this Right, we're just gonna zoom in on this. The Twitch layout's all different. What happened? Ah, uh, so this outside rim and these guys, you could totally model that up, and then have like a like a bevel here that dips down and goes inward, and then make all of this an alpha, and then uh, on the inside extrude in, just so you have depth and darkness inside. So it feels like it goes somewhere. That would that would go a long way. You could also, uh, I guess, you could alpha out these and model this panel, and then put all of these in the in the mesh. Uh, later, Kyle. Later, kids. <laughs> Father Kyle's out out the house. You like depth and darkness, especially darkness. So if you like depth and darkness, you will get more depth and more darkness if you, if you alpha it out and then paint inside to fake the depth. Instead, instead of it being faked on texture, actually giving it that depth. What is darkness without depth? <laughs> what does it mean? What is life? Oh, God damn it, I keep pressing. Man, geometry wise, it's quite high poly. Like uh, the keys, I don't think you even need to add the little bevel on them. You just need to bake a nice normal. It's like when, when the keys have bevels on them, I'm not sure why this is that's flat you know what I mean this this definitely needs like a let me look here so this doesn't have a bevel while the rest does it's very weird this is this is a good good pass so is this uh, panel here I mean I guess you don't have to it's like these can be flat like this and then just normal mapped but like in here, I would just cut geometry and then push that in a little bit. And even like maybe cut in here and push that in as well. And these guys, I would just also cut and push inward because you need you need the depth to help you sell your shape. These should should uh, be mesh so that they can they can float when it's on a table. See, and the bevels are so small on this that I thought it was baked. I think making those bevels maybe twice the width. Hey, dude, all in the bevels, man. Because it's like that's, yeah, let's see here. So you're, you're paying for a bevel here, but then you're not uh, softening that edge to allow the bevel to help you uh, push the normal around the corner. See, like right, right there, you see how there's that highlight? I expect the highlight to go all the way around and all the way back the other way if I move the light around. Where is it? There it is. Uh, the dirtiness and your roughness is really good. I like that. Uh, don't worry about going to high res on your textures as well. So you can see you're getting compression artifacting in your uh, reflection of the screen. The screen could probably be brighter as well. 
Maybe he needs a bevel on the buttons? You mean like... You mean like that? Hang on here. Like, that's pretty hardcore. You could definitely widen this. And then you wouldn't have to bake a normal for it. Again, these are really high. I guess that, that is okay, though. Like, this material and this material should feel pretty similar. And it, maybe uh, getting some... Um, what is it? Some gunk buildup on the edge of the screen. Dude, this song is crazy. That would that would be pretty nice. Maybe showing uh, the over usage on the keys, like the ones that are used the most, like where you always hit spacebar. Maybe it's like a little bit darker or lighter there. But can it run Minecraft? All crew present. What's happening? Wait. Oh man, I missed the times where it said loading multiple times. <laughs> that was a thing. Hey, what's up, Axel? I don't know. What does the stream think I did? I'm curious now. What do you guys think I did on the uh, stream today? <laughs> This looks pretty nice back here. Um, there's some, uh, yeah, this looks cool. You gotta dirty up the O R and O R N and P keys. <laughs> Vine perfecting, nice. This, yeah, the back here looks pretty nice, though, as far as materials go. Look at that aliasing. Maybe add a little bit more space between these. That way it doesn't alias as much like that. Anywho, in general, it looks pretty good. It's just, it's like the all those fine tunings that really push it. All right, this one. Man, this is super dirty. Dev G. So right now I would say uh, all the details are there for sure, but the contrast between all the details is really strong. Like I'd be curious to see what your albedo only looks like. Cause your albedo only should be pretty, pretty muted. Um, Plenty to work with now. Awesome. The, I mean, if the glass has a ton of imperfections and stuff in it and scratches and shit like that, then this is looking about right. The alpha on the paint though, like you, like you have that white outline. Uh, is that the alpha or is that the textures uh, edge? Hmm. Yeah, but it, right now it feels like it's uh, it's fighting with itself for all the detail that you're adding to it. Like simplify, like you can make it really dirty without, like try making it as dirty as you want as far as like this goes in your, in your, um, in your roughness and see how far that takes you. Because most of the time it's roughness that's getting dirty. As far as the shapes and stuff goes, though, and how this is grounded by the darker values down here is, is good. I'd be careful on how dark those get and then how much of that is normal map. Like, there's so much information in here that I can't tell if that's supposed to be stone or metal because the, the difference between this and this, are the, they're basically the same material. And they're, they're denting and dirtying the same way as well as the glass. So it's almost, it's like everything is the same material right now as far as the the damage is treating it. 
hopefully, hopefully that's enough information for you. The model itself, I'd be curious to see the model in uh, without any materials on it, just to see how everything baked out. Because in general, it looks pretty good. It's just it needs a uh, it needs another once over with the materials. I mean, if you want, I don't know if this is if you're comfortable with this, but if you want, you could give me the uh, you can give me the mesh, and we can talk about material dirtiness and all that stuff on the next stream or something. And then, yeah, we can look into it. This is pretty cool, though. It's a it's a cool asset, and there's a there's a lot of story stuff going on on it. I that part I actually like the most. You'll message me. Nice, cool. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to be like, oh, so see, this is what you do. <laughs> but I can maybe I can use portions of it to help with examples that everyone can learn from. But cool, coolio. All right, this one is Reddington, and uh, yeah. In general, it has a very stylized feel to it. Looks pretty cool. Next time, a dirty stream. So dirty. So dirty, can you handle it? So uh, this this looks pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to, I don't, I don't know what these are. I'm assuming those are like, maybe like you're, you're working on chips and stuff. In general, this looks pretty good. There's a weird, um, this line here, or maybe this is an easier color to see. This line here, this one, I'm not sure what that is. And then these cracks still need um, work to break them up so that they don't look like they're procedural. Supposed to be chips? Okay. Um, the So make sure that the chips look like they're going inward. Uh, and then pay close attention to the color in here as well as the color color in the chips because those should be, if it's an old surface, the only thing that would be making anything dark in here is probably like dirt or dust buildup, right? And that's usually going to accumulate on the, oops, that's usually going to accumulate on areas like under here and like that. So let's see here just on on edges where where you'd expect it to fall and rest in general though I, I'm really liking where this is going this is pretty cool looks fun should check out uh, Marika's scene from the challenge her stuff's really good I'm pretty happy with how hers turned out but yeah see like uh, up here you can tell like this actually is resembling more of like a piece of paper because the height feels like it's the same. It feels like it's on top of these versus like going either the same depth as this or deeper. I don't know. You'll figure it out though. It's pretty cool. Pretty dope. Pretty, pretty dope. Remember to get the uh, slope slope blur on there for uh, chipping up edges too. And don't worry about the color yet. Oh, gun. Jacob. What's up, dude? So this is Jacob's gun. His mini SAF. Work in progress. Hmm. Hmm. Honestly, it looks, uh, there's some tight edges in, in some spots, but it looks pretty balanced. Oh, nice. You're doing a uh, floating. If, for anyone not familiar with this, this is, uh, so instead of having to model these into this piece, you just float them like this. And then when you do your normal bake, the projection from the normal pass where it does a raycast check will just put those into the normal of this. 
you just have to make sure that your cage envelops those. So the cage would have to go out at least this far past these. And then, yeah, the rays will see it and then project it onto the normal during the bake process. Looks like he's doing it with a lot of stuff, which is good. That's a good way of doing it. Could probably widen those just a little bit. In general, this looks pretty good. This is interesting. Is that a, a weld? Looks creepy without them being baked. Yeah, you're getting a little bit of a shadow artifacting. This one's modeled in. Large weld lines. Cool. And that, yeah, that's a serious weld. In general, this looks pretty good, though. I mean, I'm not a gun person, so I don't know. I don't know what makes it look wrong. Oh, my God. You did it. You did it. Extra credit points, man. Later, Justin J. Thanks for hanging out. Why would you weld that? It's probably for more character. I mean, he could easily model a rail into it, right? But that's more like character. I just imagine shooting the gun like like this. Like you're just like spraying it. You're not really worried about using it tactically with the way that it's angled right now. It's like, no, nah. no, man, I, I shoot. I shoot at an angle, not sideways, at an angle. Sideways is for idiots. This way. Take a drink every time Din is not a gun guy. It's true, man. <laughs> what? What? It's true. Looks cool. Stock folds as well. Nice. Spray and pray, baby. Uh, from the top here, maybe this is too wide. Like, that stock feels super stocky. Just didn't have enough time... For the turn in. Oh, is it for a class? Uh, creating a. Looks dope. Stock folds. Yeah, it just it just looks chunky. Yeah, I see the uh, the fold. The hinge is right here. Pretty cool. Gun feels a bit gunny. You graduate in a month? Dang, dude. Yeah, you should. When you get a moment, you should bake this out. This will look really good on your portfolio. All right, onward. That's that's the confusion. That's me right there. Uh, Dev. Dev G. Uh, I will, I'll make sure to uh, upload all this stuff on YouTube for you. All right. Lighting steadies. Take a drink because I'm not a character artist, but skin's looking pretty, uh, pretty good. I think the the facial hair and his hair. I guess unless you're going for a certain style. Yeah, right now he just feels like he's missing structure under his skin. Like the maybe it's the uh, what you would call it. The subsurface is a little strong. This one looks better. He needs some more uh, contrast in his facial hair. Because, like, you can see, like, there's, there's, like, lighter hairs. And they're just kind of, like, if you're adding that to the... Uh, it's kind of like this. If you see... If you can see that in the lighting here. He needs some extra bones. <laughs> This is pretty cool though. I need to sign in with Polycount so I can comment on it. Yeah, the hair on, on like his head hair is, is looking pretty nice. The pore uh, detail 
normal you've got on him probably needs to be tiled up a bit more. You could do that on another UV set so that you can actually uh, take the UVs around the nose and scale those, uh, scale those UVs down. That way the pores get a little bit bigger around the nose area. I don't, I don't know if that's like what character artists do, but it seems like it could, could be pretty nice. I'll try to make it less gunny. <laughs> oh man. That's awesome. The only other thing I would say is uh, his face tends to be a little bit more round. Uh, primarily around like, so he's got stronger cheekbones or he's got a strong cheekbone that go into his cheeks. Uh, so he's, he's filled out a little bit here, you know? Blech. The model is from his classmate. Oh, that is good to know. So he's working on lighting. So, okay. That is super good to know. Did he say that in the thing? I just didn't catch it. Oh no, I lost my spot. F. Hang on here. Oh, he did say it. Meh. Well, tell your friend his face is a little thin. Um, as far as lighting studies go, yeah, the most recent lighting study is best. I think it's because it's not a strong light. Thanks, Reed, for the uh, checking. Uh, yeah. Man, this reminds me a lot of uh, EVE Online. Narrow the FOV. Ah, that's a good, that's a good call. FOV is too wide. I mean, in this shot, it actually looks a little bit more. <laughs> okay, mm, EVE. Mm. All right. Mr. Lopez, so this is the final result of your scene. Uh, you have the concept in here as well, right? Oh my God, just scrolling. Blah. Um, so the concept is really empty. That is so weird. Because I would totally like, oh God, sorry guys, I'm scrolling like crazy. Um, oh, this turned out pretty cool. Zoltan, what's up, man? Uh, oh, hello. <laughs> so I like the addition of the cables. Um, let's see if I can get another. So in this shot, I'm going to open this in a new tab. That way I don't get the crazy stuff going on. So right now there's a lot of repetition going on right here for obvious reasons. That's why it's built the way it is, right? It's, it's repetitive in design. Uh, getting some, like a dirty mask that you can go in and like, uh, if you apply a mask that kind of adds damage and aging and stuff like that, and you just kind of like, have it creep up on, on pieces like up here and have that drip down and just have some, some dirtiness, uh, bevel these edges. So they're not so sharp, maybe even chip a, some of them, just model that in, um, make, I don't know, three or four more unique props and just start like placing them throughout the space in like a logical way, like to maybe accompany the computers. Um, let's see here. I actually really like this area up here. This looks, that came out really nice. I like what you did back here too. The highlight on the edge of this frame is pretty cool.
You should totally put some, I think it's in the concept of some shapes here. You know, something like that. Low, 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 low. Uh, and just trying to get away from these, uh, the the basic shapes. Because I mean, the concept is, is basic shapes, right? Doing things to help break that up or, or Propping in front of it to just break up the silhouettes and stuff will help a lot. Damage dec decals will help a lot as well. Yeah, so this, exactly, that's Havoc's, Havoc's on it, man. So like this detail and these details, or like this piece here that curves, and then there's the space there, and then this, or like how thick that is, and then it goes to a thin one, like, putting the th that thick pattern here and then a thin one there maybe incorporating this shape into the corners or something or like up on this uh, that might be too high because then it starts to look like it's yeah it starts to look like everything's like way up up high getting a lot of those shapes and patterns and details along this would be really helpful this turned out really nice it's got a it's got a good glow to it Puddles, puddles could help. You could make a ground tile piece as well if you needed to. Uh, add a little bit of modeling into it and then use that and duplicate it down the scene because my perspective is so good. Um, there we go. Sure. Yeah. Let's. Okay. Um, these wires are really good. The amount of detail that's happening here is nice. And I think, like I was saying earlier, adding a bunch of props, maybe some decals, breaking up edges, uh, adding a lot of these details into the rest of the space is really gonna, like especially along the trim pieces here. This guy here, there, like that'll all like help you quite a bit. Yeah, cause I mean like, if these are their, their interests, and I say they, like the people, that's their design. They're going to want, that's going to be everywhere, right? In some form. And it's, it's good to fill the space out with props and stuff. Just make sure it doesn't get too busy, right? Because the, the focal point's the beam. The beam will become even more of a focal point as you get props that cast shadows because of how bright that is as well. In general, though, it turned out pretty nice. I mean, it, it looks like like you were going for the concept and you nailed the concept, so. Super cool. What is this? Bester. We're just going to click on all these. So your graffiti is looking pretty cool. Oh, nice. Yeah, the propping is looking nice down here. The uh, Be careful with how dark. Uh, your values are getting or how saturated saturation might be a little high uh, without without any hard numbers um, I can give you like a let's see here oh I gotta move a little bit faster make sure I get all your guys's images so in this in this range uh, without giving you uh, scientific numbers, I would, uh, let's see here. I think you can go over here, but I usually stay away from it. Basically work inside of that space for PBR values. Just don't, uh, I mean, you might be able to do a little bit more of this, but you don't want you don't want to go into your full whites, and you don't want to go into full blacks, and you don't want to uh, go oversaturated. So uh, let's see here. So like this blue, for example, is just too it's too blue. But yeah, this ah this uh, propping in the corner here is. is Pretty cool though. I don't know about a third barrel on top. And if they're using this door 
at least a little bit, then you want to make sure that it's it's cleared. Uh, you could, propping wise, this edge, like you can put little, uh, the bumper pads here. Like, you know, when a truck pulls up and has to like park up against that. What's up, DreamSci? Hard values are 50 to 243. Thanks, dude. So there's 50, so don't go lower than that. And then 253. Or 243, wait, 243. Man, that's that's pretty high up there. I would say possibly even lower, but yeah, two, 243 sounds, sounds about right. And then your saturation, just stay away from up here unless you're like working with neon lights and stuff. Details are looking pretty good though. I like the, the props and stuff. Maybe um, the papers that you have on the ground vary up their colors or they're like how dirty they are just in shapes just so that they have like some some differences uh that ranges for albedo uh jam and yeah that's only for non-metallics when you start getting into metallics they get it gets pretty pretty dark This looks pretty cool. Really like the the details that are coming through here now with the shadows and stuff. This is awesome. That wire there, super cool. Uh, I would maybe expect a sign here, maybe some labels, markers and stuff. Signage. Maybe a, a sign here that says something. I don't know. In general, this looks this is looking real good though. I I'm still really uh, I'm having a hard time letting those edges be like they are, just because it looks like low low poly geometry. Uh, maybe modeling in some like reinforce pieces to it or something if you want to keep it boxy like that. Adding a sign here will really help like break that away a little bit. Maybe. Maybe some bolts and stuff that suggest that there's a lot of reinforce reinforcing happening inside of this material itself. Yeah, pretty cool though. Pretty cool. And your graffiti looks looks dope. The propping is really nice. Just some more variety in the papers, and I think uh, outside should be looking looking good. All right, this one's from Kevin. Oh yeah, here. Da -da 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 -da. Or Mr. Knock. This one looks pretty good. I'm liking it. The uh, let's see here. The size of these str striations from the uh, from the brick press feels a little either soft or force. I don't know the depth as well on this. Uh, you're getting a little too hard of a fall off in your. Uh, what do you call it in your in your height map? So you're getting really harsh drop offs. You can get away from that by uh, at some point in your height map blurring uh, using a high quality grayscale blur, and just to help average out those values and give them a gradient. That'll allow you to push your shapes just a little bit further in in the uh, depth. Ao looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this looks this is looking pretty awesome. I would say uh I would say you still need to take a couple more passes at your roughness and make sure your albedo range or your albedo colors like yeah, that looks pretty good. I mean, I think it I think it's your roughness. I think your roughness needs needs work. Like if if this is your roughness, that doesn't that's not accurate. Um, maybe we should look at roughness at some point on the stream just because the, the ranges are it's pretty reflective here 
and usually it'd be pretty muted, I guess, just because it would be really rough. Uh, what's this one? And then you, it looks like we've got a Rust. Rust looks pretty good. Uh, it might be a, a, a bit too saturated. And um, maybe maybe going a little less on the saturation, but then blending it in with another mask that allows you to bring up some of the, the saturation so that you get that sprinkling of, uh, of saturation between your... Because, like, look... That doesn't look as saturated as the albedo only. That's really interesting to me. Your values might be too dark in your roughness as well, considering it's it's rust. It would have a lot of micro noise and stuff. It would be nice if I could expand on PBR and their values at some point. Okay. Will do. Will do. All right, got three more and then I got to get out of here guys paint pigments that are so pure so pure I'm gonna I'm sorry I'm gonna mute this because I'm just looking at the Oh man, that's awesome. That's super cool, dude. I mean, I don't I don't have too much to say on on this. It's just really cool to see. You could, uh, on the fence, you could have meshes that start really small that you can't see, and then they scale, like you do like a display scaling so that you get clumps that start to form. But they're just, they were inside of the wood and then they scale up. Yeah, the particles at the end are a little intense. And then there's, uh, there's some weird lines in the back here that are confusing. In general, though, that looks pretty cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is Corey's. Uh, and he was wondering how he gets away from that wetness. So this is, Corey, this is all in your roughness. So uh, the blacker, the more to black that you get in your roughness, the more you're going to get uh, wet looks. So, like, if you want to remove wetness in your material, just go in your roughness and start making your black values lighter. And that should that should help you. I think that's the right way. I always get those flipped. But all right, guys, I have to get out of here. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you on uh, Thursday. Should be good. Enjoy the music. I'll check you guys later. Thanks for hanging out again. Have a good night, guys.